Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another edition of With the Prophet. I'm Ali Coleman, I'll be your host. Our subject, parents, in particular looking at the rights of parents. Uh, and uh, we are try our best uh, to relate this to uh, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his parents. We know that there was very little time that he was alive with his parents, uh, peace be upon him. Our guest uh, visiting from Saudi Arabia, Sheikh Asim Al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you again for being with us, Sheikh. We look forward to a great conversation. Uh, maybe we should uh, elaborate for those who are not fully aware. The Prophet, peace be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, lost his parents at a young age, and so he didn't spend a lot of time living, uh, walking the earth with them. Uh, but uh, a very important question is uh, always, um, uh, I mean, we wish the best for our parents, and then certainly the Prophet, peace be upon him, wished the same. Uh, there's some spiritual concerns with the spiritual fate, the ultimate destiny of the parents, and even his uncle who took care of him after his parents died. Can you talk about that? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi hudahu amma ba'd. In Islam, the role of parents is highly appreciated. Mm -hmm. And there are so many verses of the Quran instructing us to be kind and dutiful to them. There are so tens of hadiths in the Sunnah ordering us to obey them, to be dutiful, to respect them, and not to say anything that harms their feelings the least. Mm -hmm. And when you come to the Prophet's parents, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that his father, Abdullah, died when he was six months uh, uh, in his mother's womb. Uh. So she was pregnant of six months when Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib died. And when he was born, the Prophet was born, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as an orphan. Soon after his birth, his mother gave him, like the customs of the Arabs from high families in Arabia, to a woman who would nurse him and breastfeed him. And she was from a tribe of nomads, so that it would be healthier for him not being brought up in the city, and it would be best for his linguistic abilities, mm -hmm. as they spoke standard Fusha Arabic. And we know that his interaction with his, his mother was limited, mm -hmm. and he lost his mom when he was about six years of age. Mm -hmm. So, having said that, our program is about with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, what would it be that connected the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to his parents? Mm -hmm. We have two hadiths in Sahih Al-Imam Muslim, which is the highest graded in authenticity. We as Muslims know that Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Imam Muslim are the highest in authenticity. So in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, a man comes to the Prophet والسلام, and says to him, O Prophet of Allah, where is my father? The Prophet is revealed to him. So Allah reveals to the Prophet that this man's father is in hell. So the Prophet answers, accordingly, your father is in hell. Mm. So the man was a little bit upset. So the Prophet told him, my friend, your father and my father are both in hell. Mm -hmm. In another hadith, it shows you the emotional impact upon the Prophet Once, he passed by the grave of his mother, who was buried in Al-Abwa, an area between Mecca and Medina. 
and he wept. So the companion said, O Prophet of Allah, why are you crying? Why do we see tears coming down your face? He said, I asked Allah that he would permit me to seek forgiveness for my mother. Allah denied me that. And I asked Allah the permission to visit her grave and Allah granted me that. So these two hadiths in Sahih al-Imam Muslim illustrate to us without any doubt that the parents of the Prophet ﷺ are in hell. Now, having said that, a lot of the different cults and sects mm. may jump the gun and they would point fingers saying this is not true, the hadith is fabricated, you hate the Prophet And when they do this, one of two, either they are genuinely loving the Prophet to the extent that they want and wish his parents are in heaven, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like we all do, right? or they are a bunch of deviant scholars or individuals who would like to make money of their congregation pretending that they are extremely in love with the Prophet ﷺ to the extent that they are ready to falsify and accuse a hadith in the Sahih to be wrong. And this is a serious offense. The vast majority of scholars of Islam have agreed that the prophets of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet's parents mm -hmm. are in hell. This is what Al Imam Nawawi said, Al Hafiz ibn Hajar, ibn Taymiyyah, the whole nine yards. The only one who differed was Al Imam Al Suyuti. And he mentioned a number of hadiths, all fabricated, all lies and, mm. and wrong. But, but Sheikh, why is this such a point of uh, concern? You, you said that some f uh, fabricate uh, uh, to make money uh, somehow, and he, to, to, uh, but. What's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, does it mean something uh, spiritually about the Prophet if his parents are in hell? Why is it an issue? See, we follow the Quran and the Sunnah. We say in the Quran that the father of Abraham, whose name was Azar, is in hell. It, it is written there, and the authentic hadith, it proves there. So we acknowledge this. Mm -hmm. And when the Prophet tells us والسلام, that his beloved uncle Abu Talib is the least tormented person in hell because of what he had done to the Prophet والسلام, and his punishment is a stone of fire placed in his shoes where his brain boils out of it as if he's conducting uh, uh, heat. Mm -hmm. His body becomes conducting heat. So when the Prophet tells us this, do we believe it or reject it? Mm. A Muslim stands with the evidence. The Prophet tells us this about his parents. Now these cults and sects, they think that because they love the Prophet so much and they hang by a thread over these issues. But if you watch all of their other rituals, and practicing of Islam, you'll find that they're far away mm. from the Sunnah, far away from the true understanding of the Quran, mm. far away from uh, 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 implementing the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. Then it is obvious that their deviance is present. Mm. Now, we love the Prophet ﷺ to the extent that by Allah, each and one of us is ready to sacrifice his own parents, his own uh, uh, siblings, his own spouse and children just for the parents of the Prophet Hassan to enter paradise and make the Prophet happy. We're ready to do this. But these deviant sects, they come and they try to tarnish 
our reputation for following the Sunnah, for following the true authentic Aqeedah by accusing us of hating the Prophet ﷺ. Who in his right mind would hate the Prophet ﷺ or would love this? This is what we believe that Allah Azza wa Jal has sent to them as we know that the people of Quraysh were following the religion of Abraham. Mm -hmm. They knew of Jesus Christ, they knew of Moses, so they had the scriptures around them, yet they failed to follow of any of them, and they decided to worship idols. Mm -hmm. So we believe that it is Allah who has condemned them to hell and told his messenger وسلم, about this. However, this is how we treat and deal with them in this life. As disbelievers, on the Day of Judgment, it's up to Allah, to Allah Azza wa Jal, mm. whether He would uh, um, uh, admit them or forgive them. This is something we have no uh, knowledge of, but mm -hmm. it is not appropriate at all to lie, to fabricate mm -hmm. hadiths like some uh, uh, of these sects do and yeah. say that Allah revived them at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they embraced Islam and they died again. Mm. And likewise with Abu Talib. All of these are baseless. It's it, personally for me, it's enough to say that, you know, it's Allah's business and He will make the ultimate decision. Uh, we're ready for our break, Sheikh. We'll come back to continue talking about the parents. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to With the Prophet. We're continuing with Sheikh Awesome on the subject of parents. Uh, Sheikh Awesome, uh, as you helped us uh, in before the break, you uh, were explaining to us how Islam emphasizes the important role that parents play and the importance for us to be dutiful, respectful towards our parents and the benefits both here and hereafter for us for, for following the Prophet's advice in this regard. Peace be upon him. Uh, however, some of our parent-child relationships are, are less than ideal, uh, to put it mildly. Uh, sometimes there can be uh, uh, serious issues, there can be painful memories that makes being dutiful uh, uh, difficult and challenging. Um, parents, after all, are human beings. And so the question that I often hear, some people, I've, to, to, to put it, to go to the extreme, some have, have said, you know, I just don't like to be around my mother or my father or whatever, uh, but I want to be a good Muslim. Uh, help us out with this, Shaykh. Well, this is a no-go. Mm. You cannot at all be a good Muslim mm. if you're not dutiful to your parents. If you're not, not only dutiful, that you are respectful, uh, obedient, the whole nine yards. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, I went to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him, which among the deeds are best and most beloved to Allah? The Prophet said, to pray on time. So I said, what else? He said, to be dutiful to your parents. I said, what else? He said, jihad, fighting in the cause of Allah. So being dutiful to your parents is far greater than Jihad. Hmm. Not only that, the Prophet said والسلام, that the father is the middle gate of paradise. So keep that gate or lose it. Meaning that it's a metaphor that you will not be able to enter paradise mm -hmm. without being dutiful, obedient and respectful to your father. And it's up to you. Whether you don't want to see him, then you will lose entering Jannah, mm. or you push yourself and f force yourself to be kind to him. The problem is that people neglect the fact that each one of us has rights, but has obligations as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Islam, we are told to fulfill our obligations first even if we were deprived from our rights with our parents, with the Muslim ruler and a wife with her husband. For example, hmm. 
A man is not kind to his son, abusive to his son, doesn't treat his offspring equally, favors some over the others. Yes. Now, these are rights of mine that my father deprived me of. Never ever think that it's possible for me to say, okay, if this is the case, then I'm not going to be obedient to my father. I'm not going to do my obligations towards him. No. Uh, he breached the contract. He's not being fair to me, so. Yes, this is totally wrong. Your contract is with Allah. He tells you, do your obligations. What about my rights? What about this inequality, uh, uh, injustice mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he's doing to me? Mm -hmm. Ask Allah and Allah will compensate you on the day of judgment. So, so Islam is not ignoring the fact that there could be some inequities or some favoritism or whatever, but is asking us to focus on our relationship with Allah uh, and, and, and not to put ourselves in it, not to be uh, to, to hurt ourselves in the process. See, why would I be kind to my father? Natural reasons. He's my father, he's caring, he's loving. I am in this world through him. But there is far greater purpose, and that is the divine instruction from Allah Azza wa to be kind to my parents. This comes first. So when I am respectful to my parents, it's not just for the natural reasons. It is because Allah ordered me to do so. And this doesn't mean that he's not be, uh, going to be accountable for his shortcomings towards me. Okay. This is something between him and Allah. All right. But in this life, and I always get this question from sisters complaining from their abusive, controlling mother or from their abusive harsh father mm -hmm. and they say why is this i usually tell them this format in answering them say listen no one on earth lives without being tested okay this is crystal clear everyone mm -hmm. is tested mm -hmm. some are tested with cancer colon cancer breast cancer leukemia some are tested with with hiv mm -hmm. positive some are tested with drought and famine, mm. looking for a drop of water or a, a piece of grain to feed their children. Some are tested by insecurity, bombs and barrels of, of, of explosive thrown at them, seeing their loved ones die in front of their eyes. Some are tested with not having a place to live. They're constantly refugees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are drowning in the Mediterranean. They are being sold as uh, slaves, etc. Each one has his own test. Now, Allah tested you with such a father or with such a mother. Would you like to swap places with the previously mentioned? Mm -hmm. Every time they would say, nope, mm -hmm. we're happy mm -hmm. with the way we are. See, this is life. It's all about your choices, your reactions, your, the consequences of what you do is what you're going to be either rewarded for in paradise or tormented for in hellfire. Mm. So we have a, a choice. It can make us or break us. We can yeah. use it constructively or destructively. Does it change when the parents are non-Muslims? Some of the Sahaba, uh, may Allah be pleased with them, uh, may have come from families that did not follow their example and follow their decision to uh, walk with the Prophet, peace be upon him. Uh, does that change the equation at all, the responsibilities, the duties to parents if the parent is, is non-Muslim? None at all. Not at all. See, in the Quran, Allah tells us, and this is really strange because people are negligent of this or two ayahs. Allah says in the Quran that if your parents, disbelievers, were to strive against you to make you out of the religion so that you would associate others with 
me. Mm -hmm. So Allah is telling us, if you have non-Muslim parents mm -hmm. and they are going out of the way, they're striving, they're doing jihad yeah. against you mm -hmm. so that you go to church with them mm -hmm. or you uh, uh, worship their idols with them, Allah says, do not obey them, yet have good companionship with. Mm -hmm. The majority of people who revert to Islam, <laughs> uh, they said, I wouldn't do that. I'll use my eight gauge shotgun. If he d does this to me, uh, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is why you need to fix your affairs and rectify them through the Quran and Sunnah. Without knowledge, you'll do the wrong decisions. So even if your parents are not Muslim, it is an obligation upon you to be obedient and respectful and to be dutiful. Asma, may Allah be pleased with her, came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, my mother is an idol worshiper. And she came to my home and wanting to connect with me. She's my mom, but she's a, a mushrik. Mm -hmm. The Prophet said, connect with her. Mm -hmm. give her gifts. Mm -hmm. He's ordering her to be dutiful to her, though she's not a believer. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, um, some of us are better th than others when it comes to managing the parent re uh, relationship. Besides the practical benefit of having uh, peace of heart, peace of mind, good relations with our parents, what are the other benefits by the Yom Kiyama, after uh, judgment, the, the day of judgment. What spiritual benefits are there besides the practical ones in this life? We can't say except what we know from the Quran and Sunnah. For example, in the Quran, Allah tells us that the offspring will be elevated to the level of their parents on the day of judgment in paradise. And there are other evidences stating the other. For example, the Prophet ﷺ told us that a man on the Day of Judgment is been given a level in Jannah. And he says, God, I did not do this. Mm -hmm. Why am I elevated to this level of paradise? And he is answered and told, this is by the dua of your offspring, the dua of your son. So the relationship is there. Mm. The content mm. of your heart would definitely be when you meet with them. I, I, you just touched something very important. Um, after our parents die, traditionally our parents would die before us, and we continue to uh, benefit them after their... That, is, that means that there's a very important relationship even after they've died. Um, indeed, indeed. The uh, Prophet mm. ﷺ was asked, is there anything that I can do to my parents after they die? The Prophet said, yes, to execute their promise. If they promised someone something mm -hmm, and they died, mm -hmm. you do that for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. To connect to those who are related to them, you have no kinship except through your parents, and to check upon their friends, mm -hmm. not only them. Yeah. So. It's a good reputation when I go and check on uh, upon my father's friends and they say, oh, may Allah have mercy on your father. He did leave after him real men. Yeah, that's right. So it's, these mm -hmm. things will connect. Of course, the Prophet said that some, when a person dies, his deeds are interrupted except from three things. One of them, a righteous offspring that makes dua. So making dua, um, asking Allah for forgiveness, giving charity on behalf of your parents, offering Umrah or Hajj on their behalf, all of these will go in uh, uh, their scales of good deeds. Mm. Sheikh Hassan, we are out of time. We appreciate you opening up and explaining these things for us. Jazakumullah khair. May Allah accept our efforts and thank you for being with us. We pray uh, for uh, this episode benefiting you and your Islamic knowledge and understanding. Uh, we will close the program for today. Thank you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.